All right, chapter nine is on receivables. So we're continuing looking at chapters in particular. We're working on chapters in particular. Like we got cash, we had inventory chapter. Now we're doing receivables chapter. And um, receivables are amounts that people owe us. And do people always pay us what they owe us? No. 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 So we call those bad debts. And we've got um, two methods to account for those that we look at in this chapter. We've got the direct write-off method and the allowance method. And um, the direct write-off method is the easy method, uh, but you usually can't use it because um, if, you're, if your numbers, if, if the number is a significant amount, you can't use direct write-off. You have to use the allowance method, which is more of an estimate every month to estimate what you may not collect. And that's the gap approved method and um, has to be used for an, a significant amount. So we've got the two methods. Um, after we finish the um, notes of the chapter, then I've got a handout for you for some journal entries. So um, we'll get those in a little bit. All right, so we've got receivables, like I said, were amounts that people owe us. Accounts receivable is what we use, the term we use for a, sh a short term a short period amount of time that they owe us that money. So 30, 60, 90 days, maybe um, 120 days. So they owe us that money within a year. Okay, so accounts receivable is a current asset due within a year. A note receivable is a long-term asset or a non-current asset, and it's due, um, you know, it could be due five years from now. It's, it's a note, it's like a loan, basically. Um, this could be for maybe someone placed a really big order and they didn't <coughs> pay it. And so they say, can we set up a payment plan kind of thing? And so we say, okay, pay $200 a month for the next two years. That would be a note receivable. Okay, so okay. if you finance a car, that would be... Yeah, that's a note. Mm -hmm. So a, a um, accounts receivable would be more like a revolving credit that the customer has with you. They pay off pretty quickly and then... Um, take out more credit and pay it off uh, several times during the year. Okay, so we can have other receivables um, if they're expected to be collected within a year. It's current. If not, it's long term or a non current. Okay, so um, like we said, people don't always pay you what they owe you. So, regardless of how much credit you check and you know, how, um, what word you get from the customer, they're going to pay you their promise. Uh, some people aren't going to pay you. Uh, so <clears throat> we have a bad debt expense account. It's an expense account. So what uh, normal balance would that have being an expense account? Would it increase with a debit or a credit? A debit. Mm -hmm. debit. Okay, so it's going to increase with a debit. It's an expense account. We also uh, could call it uncollectible accounts or doubtful accounts. I call it bad debt expense just because that's easier to say than all the other than the other one. So they're the same thing though. So um, different businesses may have different uh, names for it, but we're going to call it bad debt expense. The direct write-off method records the bad debt at the time that it's uncollectible. So when it is judged to be worthless. When the customer calls you up and says, I'm not paying you, I'm sorry, get over it, you know, or they die, or they go out of business, or they file bankruptcy, you know, you, you really don't expect to get any more money from them. Can't the, get from <coughs> yeah, right. The allowance method records bad debt expense at the end of every accounting period based on the sales. So, what the allowance method does is you look at how much you put on credit how much you gave on credit and allowed them to put on credit during the period and then you make an estimate, 1% maybe, 5%. You look historically and say, in the past, we've not been able to collect 5% of sales. So we're gonna book our bad debt expense at 5% of those credit sales. Or maybe you look at how many people are past due. So okay, if they're over 120 days past due, you're probably not gonna pay you. So you may look at that and say, let me just add up that number, and that's what our bad debt expense is going to be. That's what our allowance account is going to be. 
So it's a, an, an every period type of thing. If you, you know, if you have very good paying customers and a very few uncollectibles, you might use the direct write-off method, especially if you're a small business. But a large businesses that have millions and millions of customers, they're going to be using the allowance method and estimating that amount. Okay, so this is the direct write-off method. Like I said, it's the easy one. Assume on May 10th, $4,200 accounts receivable from D.L. Ross has been determined to be uncollectible. So all we do is just take it out of their receivable with that credit that reduces receivables and we debit bad debt expense and that increases it. So bad debt expense goes up and it takes it out of their accounts receivable. So that's pretty easy, huh? Okay, pretty easy. All right, let's say that was in May. Let's say in November, the Rosses just send us a check and they decide they want to pay their bill. Um, this could have been, maybe they just finally have some money to pay us. Maybe they were doing bankruptcy and we got our share. Uh, maybe they died and their estate was, you know, who knows. But we got money from them in November. So what we have to do is reverse that first entry. One of the very, very few times you're ever going to credit expense account. Okay, we don't ever, we, we've never done that yet except when we close it out. <coughs> so one of the very few times you ever credit an expense account, we take it out of, of the expense and reinstate, this is called reinstating, reinstate their accounts receivable so that when we post the cash, we have something to post it to, accounts receivable. Okay, so their balance lasts for like 10 seconds <laughs> until you post that cash payment. Okay, so you don't reinstate it until they pay you. So you get rid of the bad expense and then put the cash in. Yep, you're, you're reducing your expense, which, like I said, we don't do that very often. But since this is for an insignificant amount, you can't use this if it's a material. Material means significant, okay, big amount. Amount that would make a difference on your financial statements. Since it's insignificant or immaterial, uh, you can do that. All right, the allowance method is a little bit uh, more detailed. Let's assume on December 31st, Exxon Company estimates 30,000 of the 200,000 balance of accounts receivable due to them will eventually be uncollectible. So we don't know how they came up with that number. We talked about that in just a little bit. But they calculated this 30000 to be uncollectible. So on December 31st, this is the end of the period. It's still going to show up on the financials for 2009. They're going to debit bad debt expense, and they're going to credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, this is a new account. We've never had it before. Allowance for doubtful accounts. This is a contra asset, meaning it is an asset account that has a normal credit balance. Okay, it's increased with a credit. Allowance for doubtful accounts. This can also be called allowance for bad debts. And I may slip up and say that. Instead of doubtful accounts, it's the same thing. I'm used to bad debts because it's easier to say. So, um, either way, same thing. Allowance for doubtful accounts or bad debts. Okay, so they put that $30,000 in the expense account and they put it in the allowance account. That allowance account will show up on which statement, you think, since it's an asset? Which financial statement? Mm -hmm. Uh, the yeah, the balance sheet because we got assets on the balance sheet. Since it's a contra asset, it's going to come out. It's going to be subtracted. So it's kind of like that depreciation, accumulated depreciation account. We take that out of the fixed asset. The um, allowance account will come out of accounts receivable because we've got to report what we really expect to collect. 
if we put this whole 200000 on our balance sheet, we're really overstating that because we estimate that we won't get all of that. We estimate we'll only get 30000 or 170000 So our balance sheet net will be the net real, realizable value of accounts receivable will be 170. So that will balance out the end result. Still mm -hmm. 200,000, but a 300 balance. Right, you'll have the 200 on your balance sheet minus 30. You'll show both of them. Right. And then you'll have um, 170. On some of these annual reports we have, it may say net accounts receivable. That just means what's actually owed minus what you probably aren't going to get. So. And that's what I just said. The net amount expected to be collected is 170, and that's the NRV. And it's going to be on our balance sheet, and we'll look at a balance sheet in a minute. Okay, so we had that allowance account. We put $30,000 in it. We booked the bad debt for that period, and that came out of our net income for that period. Now, January, the next month, the next accounting period, Mr. Parker's account of 6000 is written off because it's uncollectible. So this is the entry we do here. This actually, this may confuse some of you, but the way I like to look at it is we're taking it out of accounts receivable. we got to take it out of the allowance account as well because that 30000 represents the 200 what's in the 200 But we're taking 6000 out of that then we take the 6000 out of the uncollectible account as well, the uh, allowance account as well. So um, when we write off, this is called writing off <coughs> a bad debt using the allowance method, we debit allowance and credit accounts receivable. This takes it out of his um, account, saying he doesn't owe us anymore. We wrote it off for whatever reason. could be because we got a... Um, a letter from him saying we're, he's not going to pay us. Like I said, he could have gone out of business. He could have died. Who, who knows what happened? But we wrote off his account. He could be so far past due yeah, isn't, isn't that we just assume he's not going to pay. Isn't there a statute of limitations on how long we have a debt? I think it's seven years. Or well, that's if you file bankruptcy on it. Seven years for a stale If they don't Yeah, but. It. Well, well how they how they charge it. Yeah, yeah and I think you have to you have to file that you judgment. are not going to pay it. Judgments of ten years. Yeah, yeah. And then ten they can years, renew them. Redo it. So if they can do it up to twice. Mm -hmm. Up to thirty years, you have to pay a debt. Could be. Yeah. You could get lucky. Okay. Uh, another example. Uh, Nancy Smith's account, five thousand, which was written off in April, is later collected June tenth. All right, so we have to do two entries here. We have to reinstate her account, and then we have to put the, book the receipt of cash. All right, so again, we um, when we wrote hers off, by the way, that was on April 2nd. Let me put this up here. April 2nd, when we wrote off her account, we did allowance for doubtful accounts for 5000 and we did her accounts receivable for 5000 That's when we wrote it off back in April. Okay, That's the entry we just looked at for the other guy, too. Okay, We take it out of allowance, take it out of accounts receivable. Now, when she pays it, she, you know, which, that's great. If they send us a check, we're going to take their money. But we're going to have somewhere to post it. So we have to, we're basically reversing this entry. Okay, instead of... Crediting AR like we did on April 2nd, we debit, put it back in her account. This makes this go up. And then we put it back in allowance because whatever's in receivables is reflected in allowance. So we have to, um, that's the corresponding credit to that reinstatement. So we're reinstating here. And then when we just do this that we're used to doing when we receive cash for payment on account. So we debit cash, credit her account's receivable. Again, her receivable lasts for 10 seconds until you get it uh, posted. Okay, so that balance doesn't show up there very long. It's cleared out. Any questions on that? 
So when you reinstate, you have to have two entries for cash and for the oil? Yes, yeah. Because you're not going to reinstate it unless you get their money. Yeah, actually, There's no reason to put it back on the books. Yeah, you're you know. just putting their, their account back on the books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're creating her accounts receivable again and then posting the cash uh, right after that. All right, so those were the two uh, bad debt methods, okay, the uncollectible account uh, methods, the direct write-off and the allowance account. This is, um, we're going to talk about how to estimate that number. Remember they estimated 30000 in that example for the allowance method? And so how did they get that? Now, with the direct write-off, you don't have to estimate anything. You just write it off when it's uncollectible. But with the allowance method, you do have to um, estimate. So that 30000 that was in that previous example, how did they get that? Well, it could have been a couple different ways. They could have taken percentage of sales. Okay, we, In the past, we've been unable to collect 10% uh, or whatever. That was actually 15%. So 30,000 of the 200,000 is 15%. Uh, so maybe they just said we'll take 15% of what's owed to us. Or they could have looked at their receivables and said $30,000 is 120 days or more past due. So they could have said if they're that past due, they're probably not going to pay us. Okay, so percentage of sales is just where they take a percentage. This example says the credit sales were three million. It's estimated that three quarters of a percent will be uncollectible. So they, their entry would be bad debt expense for 22.5 and allowance for doubtful accounts 22.5. That would be their entry. That's how they got that 22.5 was by percentage of sales. I, oh, well, there it is. I know I had it on the on the uh, PowerPoint. So, so that would be their entry. And again, they mention in here that if your allowance account had a balance, this particular example disregarded that. But um, when we do our, our <coughs> example, we're going to take that into account. We're going to figure out what we want this to be and make it that. So this one apparently had a balance, and we added 22.5, and now it's got a balance of 25.750. Okay, so their allowance on their balance sheet would actually be 25.750. And look, there's the T account. I would get ahead of myself. All right, so the aging of receivables is when we see how many people are past you, or or severely past you and add that up and that's how we get the number for the allowance account. This is an example of a um, receivable schedule. It's got the customers in column A and it's got their balance and then this is days past due. So it shows Ashby and Company they're 31 to 60 days past due. So they're a month, almost two months past you. Um, this Saxon Woods company, they're 91 to 180 days past you. Okay, so we could do this a couple different ways. We could just say, okay, anybody from this column over, we're going to assume uncollectible. The way they do it on here is they take percentages. And that's that's just another way you can do it. It's you're going to estimate whatever way works for your company, whichever way is the most accurate. This schedule shows that they think that two percent of the people that aren't past due yet are not going to pay. And you can see this goes up five percent for if they're a month past due, ten percent if they're over a month, and. Up 80 percent. If they're over a year past due, they're 80 percent uh, likely not to pay us, which that makes sense. 
Well, you can get those numbers by just demographics, look at the past history. Right, you would, you would look historically and see what happened, and that's how you would get those, those numbers. Okay, so that's how this company did it. You know, each company is going to be different. Like I said, we could just say, okay, anybody from here on out is not going to pay, or um, we could do the percentages. Okay, so what they did is they, they took, okay, 125 times 2%, 64,000 by 5%, 13,1 <coughs> by 10%, all the way down to the 14 by 80%, added them all up, and that's the number that they're going to use for their entry. So um, they're going to use 26,490, add them all up. So what happens if it's not that much? When you adjust it the yeah, next... So you have to adjust at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, every, at the end of every, every period, quarter. you're going to adjust it. Yeah, yeah, you could. You could do a year. You could do a month. It just depends on what your company does. Okay, so any other questions on the aging? Account for simple aging schedule. Okay, percentage of sales, we already talked about that, but this particular slide tells you that you compare it to the balance and the allowance method, and we're going to do that in a few minutes. So if you get, say your allowance account has a balance of 5000 and you get, when you do your percentage of sales method, you get uh, 25000 as your estimated uncollectible, your journal entry would only be for 20 because you've already got five in that account. So you compare it, and then do your adjusting entry, but we're going to do that on our worksheet. All right. So far in your notes, what do you miss? The first two pages, basically. Yeah. Do you have anything? Well, I've got some of them. I have a number of them. What was the first one? Claims, all money claims. Claims, accounts, and notes. Okay. And then uncollectible receivables are also known as bad debts. Um, I didn't really talk about that. Some, some companies accept only cash or credit. This puts the burden on others to collect bad debts. And that makes sense. We see that now. Not many people pay, take checks. Um, so they don't have to chase down the check writer. They just take a debit card. Well, what if you don't have money in your account? The bank chases you down, right? Yep. So the burden is on others. Uh, two methods, direct write-off and allowance. Direct write-off method, um, bad debt expense is not recorded until the account is deemed worthless. Therefore, neither an allowance account nor an adjusting entry is needed. And again, it's not GAAP approved unless it's an insignificant amount. Allowance nor an adjusting, allowance account nor an adjusting entry is needed an insignificant amount. Okay, number two, under the two ways of estimating uncollectibles, B is compare the amount, the existing balance. We're going to do that in a second. To determine the adjusting entry. Compare the amount to determine the adjusting entry. We, we've done that mm -hmm. lots before, like with supplies. You know, how much we had and how much we got left and determine what the adjusting entry. So uh, it's where you um, have to uh, analyze the T account, figure out what you need for your journal entry. Uh, allowance for doubtful accounts subtracted from AR balance. This is called NRV, net realizable value. if the account is actually collected after being taken out of the allowance. Y'all see that? Taken out. Yeah, I need to change that. That should be... Yeah, 
this last bullet here, right here, the count is actually collected after being taken out of the allowance for doubtful accounts. That should be changed. Okay, do y'all see where that is? Bottom of the light, second page. Okay, because remember that, that entry right above it, that debit to allowance, that takes it out of it. Because mm -hmm. we take it out of receivables, take it out of allowance. Okay, so that gets your notes up to date. chapter goes through notes receivable which we've already defined as longer than a year so this is going to usually involve interest charges so we have to account for those separately from the actual principal on your notes you have several blanks for vocabulary for this okay so a promissory note is um, basically a loan so you've you know, if you have a car loan or a mortgage, you know, you've dealt with this, these terms before probably. So a note receivable or promissory note is promise to pay. The maker is the party making the promise to pay. The payee is who the party pays. Okay, so in, we've been talking about the we're the business, so we're the payee. The face amount is the amount the note is written for. So if the customer made a big order, can't pay it all, say it's a $10,000 order, we say, okay, pay us um, $1,000, um, or let's say $500 a month for the next 20 months, because that'd be over a year, so almost mm -hmm. two years. So pay us $500 a month for 20 months. We're also gonna add interest to that. So we're going to end up getting more than our $10,000 because we're also going to get interest. The issuance date is the date of issuance. The due date is the date the note is to be paid. A maturity date, it could be called that as well. In the example I just said, it'd be once a month, so maybe like the 15th of every month or the 1st of every month for the next 20 months. The term of the note is the amount of time between the issuance and the due dates. And the interest rate is the rate of interest. And that's paid on, um, well, it depends on how it's set up. This particular definition says it's paid on the face amount for the term of the note. If you have a car payment, you notice that you pay interest only on your existing balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, your mortgage is the same way. But a business could say, no, we're going to charge you 10% every month on the 10000 or whatever. Credit card. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but really, even with credit cards, you only pay the percentage of your balance. So with your car, you know, when you say your car payment, when you first buy the car, your first payment is mostly interest. Um, probably until about halfway through. You don't start digging into the principal significantly. Unless you get smart and you do a double pay, you pay one yeah. of that and you pay one on the back end. And you got to tell them it's for yep, a principal. this goes on the back end. But, you know, it's, um, it, that's the amortization. Okay, if you, if, whenever you take out a loan, they, they can't, they usually give you an amortization schedule. You may just have to ask for it. But it shows you how much is paid on principal and interest of each payment. So, um, The car doesn't have a way around that. If, the, if you get an early... You pay the car off early, you get a charge for early. That could so, be part so of your they loan. So make, make up their, their yeah. interest rate. Their it could be, yeah. It's not part of everyone, but yeah. yeah. The That's one thing to ask <laughs> if there's a payoff penalty. Yeah. Um, you know, with your house, let's say your house payment's $1,000. The first payment you make could be $900 interest yeah. and $100 principal. The next payment you make is, you know, let's say $890 interest and $110 principal. So, it, and all the way down to your last payment that you're going to pay off your house, that $1,000, could be $900 principal and $100 interest. So, you pay all the interest up front. That's why you can get upside down a lot in your cars. 
That's why you get upside down Car um, worth cars, less especially, because they go down in value. Houses hopefully go up in value, so you don't get Not caught. Really. <laughs> yeah, they're supposed to go up in value, but um, you know that's why you don't get caught as much with your houses as you do your cars, because you think I've been paying two hundred dollars a month for two years. I should have this paid down $2,400, and it's not, because you paid all your interest up front. So that's the way they make their money. Anyhow, um, they show a, an example of a promissory note. Um, usually they're not this size. It's a whole page, you know, a regular sheet of paper. But um, it will have the, all these aspects on it, okay? All the things that we just defined, issuance date, interest rate, make or pay, all those things. All right, so I talked about the balance sheet a little bit while ago. This shows you the asset section of a balance sheet, and it shows where the allowance account is subtracted from accounts receivable. Okay, this only shows the current. This is assets. This is just a, a snip from the from the balance sheet. But we've got our cash. We've got investments. We had not talked about that yet, but um, and then accounts receivable less. Allowance for doubtful accounts, and this is called the net realizable value of that. Okay, so similar to how we put depreciation on the balance sheet, subtract it out. Accumulated depreciation. All right, we're not doing those this class. Okay, we'll do those. Um, so we're not doing financial mm -mm. analysis. Mm -mm. We'll do, the, the, do those chapter 17. Okay, the financial analysis stuff with chapter 17 in accounting two.